Hi everybody, Fred here. Welcome back to Solid Ground Electronics. Today we'll be taking a look at the Creality CR10 3D Printer Kit from Gearbest. In this episode, I'll be sharing my thoughts with you about this machine and talking about some of the modifications that I've done to it, namely automatic bed levelling and filament detection. Like everything else that I've received from Gearbest, it was packaged rather well and had no damaged parts. I'd be wary of accepting it though if the box was damaged as you may have trouble getting a replacement. I think the automatic return and refund route would be cheaper than accepting it and shipping it back at your own cost. Bingo. In the box you should find a Y-axis platform, a box of accessories, the control box and the XZ-axis gantry. The box of accessories includes a nozzle cleaning tool, memory card with instructions on, side cutters, allen keys, spanners, a screwdriver, print removal tool, zip ties, USB cable, mounting brackets, spool holder, power cable, spare hardware, a reel of tape and a spare Bowden tube. Oh, and the smallest reel of white PLA filament I have ever seen, but props to them for including it anyway. On first inspection of the machine, I noticed that the belt that rides on the Y-axis idler was making a funny clicking noise where it wasn't central to it. I rectified the problem by loosening the two bolts and bending the bracket just enough to make it perpendicular to the Y-axis. Perfect. I think my machine must have been tested prior to shipment, as it had signs of previous use. This damage was purely cosmetic though, so I think I can live with it. The blue plastic inserts in the frame looked a bit tacky, so I carefully removed them. Make sure you hang on to a piece for later though, you'll see why shortly. This machine uses 3D printed parts, however they are not load bearing components and their dimensions are not critical. Preston over at the Press Reset channel got quite a lot of backlash after he slated the ANET E10 for having printed parts. I totally agree with him though as smooth rods need to be parallel for good performance. Gearbest got him to unpublish the video so go and check out his other videos to make up for the loss of views. These videos can take so long to make and I'd be devastated if it happened to me. With the parts unboxed, it was now time to assemble the printer. This was a trivial process and I was really surprised how quickly it came together. The XZ gantry is held in place with two steel brackets and a handful of bolts. All of the tools that you need to put together are included in the kit, but at this point you can't really call it a kit, especially if you compare it to the likes of the ANET A8, which took a lot of work to put together. I think the term kit is used to filter out people that aren't prepared to fix things, tinker with settings and learn how best to operate the machine. Now that the frame was assembled, the Bowden tube gets inserted into the extruder until it clicks. Once that is done, the electrical connections to the heat bed and hot end are made using the two connectors on the back of the control box. Finally, the stepper motors and end stops are connected to the control box, taking note of the yellow labels and pin count of each connector. With the printer assembled, it was time to print out some mods. The quality of the first print was almost perfect, which was surprising considering I had just been guesstimating the Cura print profile. 
You can download these settings from my website to use as a starting point if you need it. The link is down in the description. After doing battle with the prints using the print removal tool for about 5 minutes, I was able to remove them from the glass bed. Unfortunately, I was not able to clean up the parts and remove all of the tape as it had become one with them. To aid with the removal process, I took the tool to a bench grinder in order to give it a shallower angle of attack. However, a lock build print bed surface ended up making the biggest difference to bed adhesion and print cleanup time. Anyway, back to some much needed strain relief. Ideally, this should be the first thing that you print. I recommend Thingiverse user Evan Rude's CR10 Bed Strain Relief. Links down below. With that out of the way, I did some cable management to prolong the life of the wiring loom. By cutting a length of the plastic insert that you saved from earlier, straight down the middle, you can make a rudimentary cable clip. It can be secured in place using two zip ties. I also did the same for the Z-axis wiring on the other side. When it came to the hot end and extruder wiring, I just zip tied it to the bottom outermost standoff. I personally think that this machine should have come with longer cables, that way we could have made up some cable chains and do the job properly. In order to reduce the footprint of the machine, I decided to mount the spool holder elsewhere on the frame. This can be done using the spare mounting hardware included in the kit. The first step is to drill out the holes on the spool holder in order for the bolts to fit through. Then, you'll need to cut down the longer of the two bolts using a hacksaw. Don't make it too short though, like I did. And with that, the spool holder could be mounted to the frame. This worked out well as it feeds directly down into my filament runout sensor without any kinks or twists. I created this part in Fusion 360 and have posted a link to the file down below. It was designed to use this cheap module on Amazon. Please consider supporting me and my channel by using the affiliate link down below. The design was based on Thingiverse user Graham ones extruder cover, so head over there and follow the fellow. See what I did there. To use this filament sensor, you need to route the ribbon cable into the control box by opening it and moving the power supply to one side. Be sure not to accidentally unplug any of the connectors whilst you're doing this. We will need to do a beeper delete to free up some pins on the control board. Remove the ribbon cable and peel back the shielding to expose the wires. Cut the brown wire near the LCD connector and then use some tape to prevent the wire touching the shielding. The white wire coming from the module should be tied to ground, while the red wire should be connected to the brown beeper wire coming from the control board. All of these signals can be accessed from the ribbon cable, but I ended up taking the ground connection from my proximity sensor interface. That's right guys, I did it again. I was so impressed with the automatic bed levelling on my tricked out ANA A8 that I just had to do the same on my CR10. This did require me to replace the glass plate with a lock build print bed surface, however the reduced warm up times were a bonus, so no complaints here. To get started, you need to print out the bracket on my website and secure the sensor to the hot end, links down below. After extending the cables and routing them inside the case, the brown wire gets connected to the V plus terminal on the power supply, while the blue wire goes to the V negative terminal. Take care to ensure that the wires don't work harden and snap, because this could cause an unwanted live connection and kill you. The proximity sensor replaces the existing Z end stop switch and requires some additional circuitry to implement. The Z end stop connector has the following pinout. 
The black wire from the sensor goes through a 10k resistor into the base of the 2N4401 NPN transistor, in this case the middle pin. An additional 10k pull-down resistor prevents it from conducting in the event of a small leakage current coming from the sensor. Finally the collector gets connected to the signal wire and the emitter gets tied to ground. Take note of the connector polarity as shown here. These mods need to be enabled in firmware, unfortunately the manufacturer chose not to include a USB bootloader so we need a compatible in-circuit programmer to enable this feature. I chose the cheapest one on Amazon that was compatible with the ATmega1284P microcontroller. The first step is to move the voltage selector switch to the 5V position. In Windows 7, upon connecting it to your computer you should get an unrecognised device pop-up. Download a program called Zadig using the link down below and run the executable. Select the lib USB K using the up and down arrows, then click install. Click install again and the drivers will be installed. Download and unpack my pre-compiled Arduino build available from my website and then launch the arduino.exe. This should open my pre-configured Marlin sketch. In order to only power the control board we will be using the USB ASP's 5V supply. To enable this, move the jumper wire to bridge the middle pin and the USB pin. Now connect the programmer to the control board using the 10 pin to 6 pin adapter, taking note of the orientation shown here. Confirm the settings, which should have automatically been assigned if using my Arduino build, and then hit the burn bootloader button. You may see these warnings come up, but it should be okay so long as it says done burning bootloader. Remove the programmer, connect the CR10 via USB, then choose the relevant COM port under Tools. Finally, hit the Upload button and be prepared to wait for a long time. You may get an error, but try re-uploading as this worked for me. If the boot screen has changed, it means the firmware has been successfully uploaded and that I now own your machine. You are solely responsible for any damages incurred using this firmware or instructions, and I cannot offer any warranty, so perform this at your own risk. Bear in mind that this is irreversible, as the original firmware is not in the public domain. But Marlin is very flexible, so this shouldn't be of any concern. Sorry to end on a disclaimer, but feel free to check out my other, more upbeat videos. Also, consider leaving me some feedback down below, and if you're in the market for any of the parts mentioned today, then please also consider using my affiliate links, as they really do help me. You won't want to miss my upcoming video, so definitely subscribe. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>